This is Sam Katz with Gallery Glass, and I'm at the studio space of Dave Singley. Can you tell me about the piece we're looking at? This one is a new piece called UV Lifer, and uh, what was important to me is that I got the skin texture to wrinkle, so I think it's sort of a material metaphor, um, and uh, it's a little homage to the end of the summer, to try to extend it a little bit. Can you tell me about your process in making this piece and, and what sort of message you want people to get from it? Um, I just jigsawed it out. It's real rough and it's real loose and it's immediate. It just came from like a really quick sketchy drawing and I was, I think like sometimes I can't explain why I would make something because I just had the inclination and I just did it and I don't know if anyone would want it but I've got a place to hang it in my house temporarily, so. And I just posted it on Instagram to see if anyone likes it. Now, is that always a part of your process, using social media as a tool to get um, creative feedback? Yeah, actually it's been pretty cool to just post something and see if people kind of like respond to it and uh, get the sense, you know, based on the comment section, whether people like it or encourage me to do more along these lines. Well, let's check out your studio. Okay, I'm gonna bring this back down. All right, she's back. So we're here in your live workspace. Um, can you show me some of the work that I'm looking at? I had made a bunch of risers for these shelves, just real quick, expedited, like little sculptural things um, over here also little skull. Um, so you do a lot of woodwork, you also do a lot of painting, illustration, do you have a preference? Um, I like to mix them all up as much as possible. Um, How long did this take you, for instance? That was just some scraps, and uh, I just let the shape come together with whatever, however they fit together with glue and nails and stuff, so it wasn't that long. I like to do work that goes quick and other work that's meditational and takes longer. This piece over here that we're about to check out, your, your light box, Carl Lagerfeld, is some of my favorite work of yours. Can you tell me about the process in making it and the meaning behind it? Yeah, it's just about like him as an icon and seeing if I can um, get, the, get his image across with like minimal shapes. And um, also I'm really into like creating like work for people to live with. So I think it's important. I like light, like changing the mood with lighting and stuff like that. And it's daytime, so it's not as effective, but I'll show you like the back is like, um, I gelled the light. It's like a smaller bulb now. And then this is just different plexi I got at Canal Plexi. I, um, I think you nailed it. Yeah. Definitely captured his likeness. And, uh, yeah. So I'm seeing on your record player some, some of your newer work. Um, you do a lot of musical collaborations, is that right? Yeah, this is, this is famous class in somewhat of an obscured way. I, actually, that came from an old drawing I did, even the text. Um, but I did this peanut butter and jelly high-fiving. My, my buddy lives downstairs, and he produces this record label. We do, I've done a lot of art for them. This actually, this fold out is is my stuff. I did this cool dog. So, do you guys work um, creatively yeah. together, or do you have real creative freedom um, in in making famous she, classes? He just asks for things like all the time, and what's cool about it is that it actually gets. He actually makes all this stuff, so it's not like a. This is actually a flexi book, so it plays on your record player. That's awesome. So, how many illustrations did you do for this project? Um, two main ones, but then all this detritus and like extra cartoon clutter and stuff uh, is, is just from collecting from over the years. Like I drew these two Batmans and then they found their way into this just to, just to like texturize this, this whole piece, you know? Um, and you've done much more than, than this book in particular. You also do a lot of record covers, album covers. Right. Um, this is actually the record cover for the Darlings album. And I put it in one of those prefab record frames. But this is from a painting 
that exists in my room right now. And I've had a couple of people that are sort of into the painting, but it's something that I actually spent a lot of time on. So it's a little bit tough to like give it up for a cheap price. I see that you're um, a real pattern fanatic and you also explore a lot of more like character illustrations. Do you have a preference? Where does the inspiration for these characters versus, you know, your pattern exploration come from? Um, I like to, <clears throat> I like to draw and, uh, and I always find that like the very first drawing is the best, like this gossip girls piece that you just looked at, um, where they're, they're just like, gossiping to each other yeah please can you that more? um they i got that gesture in like one in the very first drawing and then i thought i would revive it and resolve it and make it better and then it just never was better than the first one and i think that's that seems to always be true in the same way this big still life piece this like information here is from a ballpoint pen so the scale started maybe like two inches. And I think that that translated and blown up and I was true to the original, like the accident of the pen leaking, um, translated well onto the scale and that you can't, if I was to like freehand those shapes on this scale, that wouldn't have happened. That wouldn't have been a natural occurrence, so. As we move through the space, I see that it's really accommodating and, and very similar to your artwork in a sense, does the space that you live and work have anything to do with, um, you know, your process, the work that you create, your creative flow? Yeah, definitely. Um, I just put this place together and installed these windows. So this is essentially my studio space. And um, a lot of stuff is generated from this. Uh, the drawings are processed here to give to be given a tooth or some character. I have this silhouette that I started and then I printed a bunch on colored paper, but then I cut them out on the side where I could see the lines of the reference. And now I'm sort of working on a pattern with these and I'm doing it in an analog way as opposed to just, you know, asking like an Adobe product to, to dictate like what a pattern should be based on these shapes so they could fit together in whatever way. Um, but now, I, really I know, like yeah, stuff. color clearly has a big part of, you know, it's a big part of your work, but there's some of these black and white illustrations I'd like you to take me through. I think that, I think that for me, like the line and shape is always important and, and letting like weird things happen. Like this is Joey Ramone. I did this drawing for um, uh, Sandy Benefit because they have the song about Rockaway Beach and all that. And that was like the original. So I try to say. Gossip Girl, yeah. I try to save like a version and I'm inspired by, um, actually, I think I have this book here. This guy, Jeff McFetridge, um, his work is really cool. Um, I think what he tries to do and, and what I try to do is get the best singular sort of representation of an idea. Like I don't need to draw a vampire peeking around a corner ever again, because <laughs> I feel like I nailed it here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then so, you can right re reinterpret that in, in different ways. Right, but I don't. I think that's maybe a problem that I have is that I don't. Um, I don't really like explore one topic that much. I just keep moving, and I'm I enjoy that. But you, it, I think maybe in a way it's hard to follow. This isn't me, but this is me. So I I like to just I like shapes, you know, and I like yeah. negative space. So. These are all just, it's sort of my own image bank. Um, make prints from these. This was just testing things out. Um, but yeah, a lot of things come from drawings and uh, and a lot of whimsical stuff, like taking the old Big Dog logo and mashing it up with like the Bad Boy Club guy. I don't know, it resonates to me because I was born in 81. So a lot of you guys are younger. These are the most recent pieces I'm working on and it's based on nail art. And um, I see a lot of this stuff in social media, so it's sort of influencing me. And um, I just find it to be like kind of trendy. It's very trendy right now. But, uh, you know, I'm willing to like use that and comment on it. 
and I think this girl's nails are gonna say Mountain Dew. So it's kind of funny because I think Mountain Dew is pretty gross. I, well, I think I'm that's sort of the nature. I'm myself get a little looser and just kind of rifle the pieces off a little faster because I think the point is there. And it's just getting back into it because I've been working on my apartment for a while. So this is kind of breaking back in for me. Do you think you'll integrate more, um, more of the patterns that you work with when you continue this series? I don't think the patterns make sense for the painting as much because it's so labor intensive. So I'm, I'm finding different ways to manifest those, I think. So the painting is, everything is always balanced out like what, what I'd be working on. So this is just kind of fun and like more playful, like when you give a kid, you know, a bunch of paint. Do you often take popular culture cues into consideration when planning out your work? Oh yeah. yeah, I did a piece where Michael Jackson was like kind of touching this little kid, but it looked like a little construction worker. And that was so long ago, but I have friends that remember the piece and they think it's ridiculous. I think it's easy for people to associate that and, and resonate with that idea. All right, thanks Dave Singley. This is Sam Katz with Gallery Glass. Now give us a kiss. Okay. <laughs>